Well, I figured I would do a recap of the car. The way it sits today, after the last uh, Miles of Mayhem, the old hot rod was ripping pretty good. Fastest it had ever been. These are eighth mile times, but it went to uh, 622. Was my quickest ET in the eighth mile. It went 115.74 mile per hour in the eighth mile. And I had my best 60 foot ever of a 1.44. So I don't get to race a lot with the car. <laughs> like not too many times a year at all, but I'm getting there. It's getting quicker, starting to get things figured out. I just went and weighed the car yesterday, took it to the scale. So inside, I kind of had it as accurate as I could for my race weight. So full bottle of nitrous. There's a fire extinguisher in there, my helmet, my uh, fireproof jacket for racing. There was full tank of fuel. And I think I ended up being, uh, the car was 3,212 pounds, I think. It's in my last Instagram post. 3,212, I think, was the car. And then with me in it, I'm 220 pounds. So we were like 34, uh, 34.40, something like that. 34.30. Anyway, kind of getting up there, but still pretty light in the big scheme of things for a Cummins diesel kind of a race vehicle maybe it's a little bit heavy compared to uh some turbo ls stuff or aluminum block ls stuff but in the cummins diesel drag racing world this is a pretty lightweight hot rod so it kind of accomplished sort of what i was after extreme budget it's all steel all factory steel body panels uh, all all factory glass the dash is still in, in there. There's no carpet. I was thinking it's awesome with some carpet back in it. The dash is all gutted in behind, but still the factory steering column. I have a Team Z Motorsports uh, steering column I'm going to put in, but uh, just trying to save up some money to get a steering wheel. Because everything I do is on a budget, so I, I've had that for a while. I just haven't been able to install it because I need a steering wheel. But yeah, what else? Just all kinds of, I guess I'll do a walk around here. These tires I bought for 40 bucks for two of these tires. It was off of a, a guy on, I think it was Marketplace. He was selling them. Uh, it's called 80 Auto on Instagram. That's where I got those tires. And then I put the Cletus McFarland. It says, hell yeah, brother on it. And kind of looks like Goodyear Wrangler. Uh, what else? The rear axle, that's an 8.8 .8 with a 35 spline axles, 327 gear. I got that from my buddy Lars. Uh, it came with the Team Z uh, upper control arms with the relocation bracket. So that was a hell of a deal. Still the stock fuel tank. Uh, what else? The shifter, I got that free from a, a Dan Goldie. Thank you very much for that. This is an old switch panel from a pilot car. Uh, the seats. Uh, that came from a guy named Mickey Olson, living in Fort McMurray. I got the seats off of him. I got the uh, Lakewood 9010s off of him. I bought the rear LX and the front bumper off of him. Thank you very much for all that stuff. Uh, the wheels, damn it, I can't remember right now who I bought these wheels off of. These are an aluminum wheel off of a newer Mustang, and I think they come in the convertible Mustangs. So that wheel was like 9 pounds, 9.6 pounds, crazy lightweight wheel for a really inexpensive price. And that gentleman, he had a tire shop, I can't remember his name right now, but I bought the tires off of him as well and put them on that wheel. What else do we got here? Uh, the radiator came from my cousin. This is out of an Audi S4. And I ended up, he was giving it away because he ordered it off Rock Auto and it was the wrong one. And I looked at it and he offered it and I said, sure, I'll, I'll take it. And I had it sitting in the, out behind the garage in my shed for a long time. 
Then finally, when I, I used to have a Polaris Razor 800 radiator in there, and it worked well. The car worked great. But for the first year of Miles of Mayhem, I thought I better step up the radiator just a little bit. So it's still a little baby radiator, but that's my big radiator. And my cousin Kevin gave that to me. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. The injection pump came from my cousin Eric. I can't remember. I traded him something for that because I still have my 160 pump. But he had the 215 pump he gave me. Uh, the nitro solenoid is Eric's. I got to get that back to him because I recently just got a deal on. I got two of those for 250 bucks Canadian. I got two of the 125 Orifice solenoids. Uh, damn, I'm forgetting that guy's name too now. <laughs> uh, it was off Facebook Marketplace just a little bit ago. He had, he had a really cool Ford Ranger uh, drag truck. He built all himself. He lives in Edmonton. Uh, that was a really cool truck. It was neat to meet him and see what he had there. What else do I got? My buddy Joel sponsored me a couple Hobbs pressure switches when we were on Miles of Mayhem the second year because I, I rigged one of these up to trigger a light at 14 PSI. And then I ended up not even using the light anymore. Uh, just watch my, my gauge. I was running them separate as well. I had lockup and nitrous. You see, I activate uh, my lockup and nitrous with Hobbs switches. So... I don't have to deal with that stuff in the cab. Uh, and I have them both right now on the one switch because lockup has a little bit of a delay. So nitrous and lockup essentially, they both trigger at the same time, but lockup starts spraying and then probably a half a second later, sorry, nitrous starts spraying, half a second later the lockup comes in. That worked good. I think that's why I hit my best mile per hour ever, the 115.74 mile an hour. Man, when lockup, when the trans is in lockup, she's rolling. Uh, fluid damper. That's the harmonic balancer from Fluid Damper. I had to run that. You know, I think it was faster than 10.55 in the quarter mile. We need it. SFI approved damper. Uh, built this bracket out of my cousin's to mount the factory alternator. I used to have a tiny alternator, but I just put the Dodge one back on. I started adding so many accessories like... These solenoids don't pull a lot, but the Zex solenoids that I had previously, they pulled a lot of amps. You know, and then I got electric fan. Now I got trans brake solenoids, nitrous solenoids. And you know, I plan to step up to two of them. Uh, my positive air shut off. This is like a safety device that in Alberta on all the big oil field sites, they make you run these on your work trucks. So we can find these super cheap around here. And I think the original one was called a Rotodeco. And Rotodeco was out of Edmonton, Alberta, I believe. They were the first ones to kind of put a patent on these uh, shutoff devices years and years ago, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, the Turbo Smart Wastegate, that's a Hypergate 40. I got this and the water pump off a gentleman in, where the hell was he? Not quite to Red Deer, a little bit south of me. Oh, I can't remember the, I don't remember his name, but I paid 250 bucks for those two pieces used. <laughs> this I bought off Facebook Marketplace, a remote mount thermostat. Uh, my cousin Dean welded it on. I found some just pieces of aluminum that I just whittled away and made a couple plates for the water inlet and outlet. Uh, the hoses were from Napa. I didn't even cut those. So I have pictures of the original stickers. So it's kind of like, OEM hoses. I can go to Napa and ask for the exact part number and the hose is both on. What else do we got? Still got the grid heater in there. I'll probably get rid of that. This is the Chinese HX40. It's a 60 millimeter compressor. A 64 millimeter turbine on the, what do they call it? The inducer and the exducer. The farthest forward point is a 60 the farthest rearward is a 64. Uh, what else? Caster camber plates. I probably got that from Mickey Olson when I got the struts. Adjustable proportioning valve to get my uh, brakes to the, the rear a little bit. With the skinnies up front and the big fatties out back, you can actually move that rear bias of the brake quite a bit. What else do we got here? 
Oh, my, uh, the HX40 Turbo. So that came from a gentleman, uh, Milo, out of the U.S. He, gave, he, like, sponsored me. He gave this to me for free. I just had to pay for shipping. Man, look how that thing has performed over the past <laughs> four years. Like, what a champion. Like, on Miles of Mayhem, we were up to 64 pounds of boost. Like, way, way more than... It's crazy, like... I can't even imagine where I might have been on whatever compressor map of that turbo, but like way, way too far. And I don't know how it never blew up. I actually think a big part of it living is this short charge piping. And this is all steel. There's not a lot of uh, place to kind of soak, soak up and be a big balloon like a accumulator. So even if, I, if I'm wide open throttle and I chop off the throttle, I never get compressor surge. It doesn't happen. And I think it's just this really small volume. So let's say when I lift on the throttle and I lose all my drive pressure, normally on most vehicles, you have a really, on a Dodge truck, you have the intercooler, all your boots. Let's say that's all full of 40 pounds of boost. As soon as you cut your drive pressure, like your fuel going into the chamber and powering the turbine, as soon as you cut it, all this boost wants to go backwards. It wants to go back into the turbo. So that's where you get that huffing or chuffing noise. But I never get that. And I think that's how that thing has lived. Because I always heard stories of the HX40, the shaft being weak and that it will uh, twist. And on, uh, what year was it first? Second year Miles of Mayhem, Peg from uh, Zip Ties and Bias Plies. He went through two of those. And the one that I seen, the one that I looked at, the shaft looked like it, it was bent. So I think that's my theory, why mine has stayed alive. Because I have such a short charge tubing. I don't have a large volume of air that's... Kind of like an accumulator ready to try to turn the turbo backwards when we lose drive pressure. That turbo's from Milo, though I said that, but thank you very much, dude, because that thing... Oh, man. This car, now that I've weighed it, this this damn thing has been making, like... Man, you can do the, you can do the math. Let's say I'm 3,450 pounds almost, race weight. And I went 115.74 miles per hour in the eighth mile. Like, go on any calculator they want. you want. I know they're not all crazy accurate. There is some, you know, plus or minus here and there. But I'm north of 800 horsepower with a Chinese HX40 non-intercooled with one uh, 125 nitrous jet. Like, super simple. Nothing complicated at all. I'm still running the uh, factory. Well, that's not even a factory lift pump. My cousin Eric gave me that one. You should see the inside of it. It looks like it has 500,000 kilometers on it. The bore was like all scored. The piston, <laughs> it looked horrible. I tossed in a 973-1 comp cams valve spring inside. And that thing's just been a champion ever since. This is a, I run dash 10, a dash 10 feed line all the way from the tank. And in my tank, I actually have a dash 10 pickup tube so like any hydraulic system man you want to feed it you want the easiest path of flow and you want the slowest speed of flow in the in the feed line there's actually calculations that will do like but anyway uh, the speed of the fluid through the line the slower we can get it the easier the less restrictive it is so dash 10 feed line i think that's how I, this factory lift pump is taking me well well past 800 horsepower so, and I think it's to the tire, 800 to the tire. So, uh, that's kind of amazing. Then I come out of the factory lift pump with all the old factory Cummins lines, little tiny steel lines out of the factory fuel filter, steel line to the inlet of the injection pump. The banjo fittings I have drilled. I just opened up the passages, but like, again, I haven't, I haven't reached the limit of that yet, so I'm just going to keep on going until I see my fuel pressure can't keep up one day, and then I still got a budget trick where I want to. I might add an electric lift pump, a pusher pump to feed that. I also thought of like having a little fuel cell, and I could have a regulator where I could actually use my boost to pressurize the fuel cell, and that would essentially be my lift pump to, you know, feeding the lift pump pressurized turbocharged lift pump <laughs> you know i maybe regulate the fuel cell at like one two three psi because depending on how big the tank is you got to calculate pressure over area so two pounds per square inch you know even on a pretty small fuel cell is a lot of force on 
on a fuel cell on all the sides. Anyway, that's kind of one idea that I wanted to do. The manifold here, uh, Brett, oh man, I'm almost forgetting your name. I think it was Brett. I worked with him a handful of years ago. He, he gave me this piece. The, that's a second gen manifold actually off of a VP44, like a 24 valve head. So the ports are round and the 12 valve head is square. There's not a lot of overlap on the gaskets, you know, but I got it for free, so I'm using it and it works. And man, I really haven't had any leaking. Like, it's all worked really well. I got that elbow off of him, which I think now I'm gonna be using when I uh, use this turbo. That is an intercooler. Brian, is it Brian? I met him when I bought my Polaris Razor radiator, the first radiator I had. He actually had a whole setup he was gonna use as an intercooler setup. So he had that little radiator and a fan and this intercooler and that was gonna be his intercooling system. But I ended up using the radiator from the car and I kept this and I always kinda of wanted to use it. So we might incorporate this turbo, we might do this intercooler. I'm just kinda of going over everything here. This is my cousin Eric's, I gotta get back to him. These are damn expensive, but I, they work excellent. Like the, there's a little piece in here that I never get any uh, oil vapor coming out of here, zero. I have that in addition to the factory one that goes down. Now, what other pieces do I got here? Oh, man, just scrap aluminum pieces that I got from my buddy Al and I ended up, my cousin welded them together and then I mount my radiator and my fan and everything off of that. Motor mounts are built. That steering rack. I traded a I traded an S par heater for that steering rack. Now I don't remember who that was that I traded that to. And then there was a guy on Facebook Marketplace. He was selling the tubular K member and these A arms. And like they're a little ratty. They've been cut and welded and clearance for big headers and stuff and whatever, man. I just bought it and used it and put her on. I got the what the hell do you call them? Uh, the bump steer kit from Team Z Motorsports. That's a Team Z coilover. That's a 200 uh, pound per inch spring on my coilover. I think it's a it's a 200 pound and a 12 inch spring. So just kind of nothing crazy, sort of standard stuff there. Uh, what else do we do? This piece. Where did I get that? I think I had an inline thermostat, like a rad cap with pipe, and I think I cut the pipe off. So we ended up just with this piece. And then my cousin lent me one of his fittings and he welded it together. So that's the highest point in my cooling system because my rad is lower. So that worked out to be just super handy. Like it's all tiny and compact and not, not, too, not too big. Uh, what else did we got on here? Trans cooler. I had that from years ago. Uh, what else did we got here? My original vacuum. I'm still running the power brake, so my original vacuum booster was toast. I just went to the junkyard and got another one. That's a derail. That's a 14 inch fan. I think it flows about 2400 CFM. That's one of their, it's like their heavy duty or I can't remember the, what they call it, but that's kind of, that's a beast. That piece, can't remember who I got that from, but that's my coolant overflow. What else, what else? The seats came from Mickey Olson. I think I said that. Uh, my fuel, my fuel shutoff is a is a rotor tiller or a lawnmower throttle. It's just bolted to the steering column. That's what moves my uh, fuel shutoff. Uh, I got a little LED light strip. I think my buddy Randy gave me that. That's my interior light. 
The tubing I bought, I bought a lot of tubing years ago and my cousin Dean, uh, man, he basically did the whole thing. I think I might have bought the main hoop. Not positive on that. I can't remember now. I might have bought the main hoop. Yep. And then all the other, all the other pieces he bent up for me and TIG welded. Man, like just excellent, wicked room where my arm and my shoulder is. That just worked out beauty. What else do we got? Uh, oh, in the back end here. This was a hitch I got from a guy and he said it was a factory. It was a hitch he had that was on a Fox body. So it's super cool. It just kind of lined up. Factory tank. Uh, the rear single adjustable coilovers. I think that might have come from Mickey Olsen as well. And way up in there, I got my Team Z anti roll bar. It's not connected right now because when I'm street driving, I just leave it disconnected. There's the upper, uh, the Team Z upper relocation. So it relocates the upper points on your uh, control arms. You see, I have the solid upper control arm from Team Z, and I have the lower. What else? Drive shaft loop there. I think my buddy Lars might have lent me that drive shaft loop. Well, sponsored me with it. I think that's where that came from. Uh, the airbags I ended up buying because the footballs were getting expensive. Oh yeah, with my anti-roll bar, I just leave the one side hooked up. One side disconnected. I guess if a guy was doing lots of miles, you might just disconnect both so you're not wearing anything out. Uh, a drive shaft. The drive shaft is a... Uh, it's built from an old drive shaft I had, and then I used half of the Dodge drive shaft. What else do we got? When I bought the car, it had the subframe connectors on it already. Transmission blanket. Ah, that's about it. Let's see. Oh, damn. What else do we got here? Yeah, in the trunk, I got the. Uh, my battery relocated in the passenger side rear of the trunk. This is my trans brake button. This is the factory steering wheel that I just kind of whittled away. Made it as light as possible. Uh, that's my little gauge package. It's called uh, Just Race Parts. It's a really slick deal. I get data logs on the screen at data logs and it'll remember the last one you did. So then I, I record it with my camera. But... For the price, man, I think it was like 300 or 350 bucks shipped to my door. Man, I got everything. Oil pressure, intake, air temperature, boost, uh, voltage. It'll do odometer. It'll do speedometer. It does tachometer. Uh, it'll do yeah, boost, pyro. I think it'll do fuel tank level. Man, it's unbelievable what it'll do. And it will data log. And they have a wideband for exhaust. You can run a diesel wideband now through just race parts. Uh, air filters from Power Driven. Just kind of go over all the little bits and pieces. I think I kind of got it all there. The Trans is the original 47RH and then a whole pile of parts I got from Power Driven Diesel. They Helped me out with an input shaft. It was one they were testing and it had a little twist in it because they were putting it to the limit. So I used that. No problem in my car. I ain't never gonna break that thing off with my little lightweight car. The converter, they helped me with a converter as well, triple disc. Uh, I got a lot of used frictions and steels off of them and I got a lot of the reaction plates. Uh, that was awesome, they helped me out. Oh, I have the uh, billet accumulator and second gear servo and the strut and anchor for second gear from power driven in the trans the valve body is the cope racing transmission valve body with the trans brake i had some issues with that one that's a little bit of a story but i actually had the boys at power driven get it working really nice for me so <clears throat> it's pretty cool all four gears are on the stick I don't have to switch anything for overdrive for fourth gear, just one, two, three, four. So that's kind of cool. 
less things as a driver to kind of keep track of. Well, and it's mechanical. So if you wanted to, if you had some bucks, you could have a pneumatic or an electric shifter and all four gears could be exact. Because if you're controlling overdrive with a solenoid, there's delays, you don't know exactly when it's happening. And if you're trying to be crazy accurate at the drag strip, if you're in a, a bracket class, you can't have an overdrive solenoid that's moving around a tenth of a second or two tenths or three tenths of a second on when it's going to engage or not engage. So all four gears on the stick is really slick. Uh, what the else? Oh, I got my Zex, that bottle, is a Zex bottle. I built that power distribution panel. This is some old stereo crap that I had down here. Just a bunch of used wire I had. This came from Princess Auto, which is like Harbor Freight. These strips I got off Amazon. Cigarette lighters, I, that came up, those actually came out of the original truck that this engine and transmission came out of. That's where those cigarette lighters are from. The 12 volt power adapters. And what else? That might be it. The Jag seat belts, I just had to get those this year because my old ones expired. Lone Wolf Consulting, a good friend, Craig Gramlich, is his consulting company. Man, he's a wizard. He's a ninja in the uh, maintenance and kind of uh, business operation and also sort of the human resources and the, yeah, he's a ninja. <laughs> that guy knows his stuff, man. He's a consultant. He's in B he's in BC on the West Coast, but awesome to have him on board. He's been helping us out. Team Z Motorsports, all my rear suspension, my steering column, my anti-roll bar. Man, like those dudes, if you want to go fast with a Mustang, that's the parts you're putting on. Power-driven diesel all the time. The amount of information that I've got from those dudes and help and just technical resource and man, just, it's been unbelievable. Like super thankful. Those guys kick butt. And what else? 215 pump. Oh yeah, my injectors are from Power Driven. Those are those new uh, power jets, they call them. Really cool. Multiple, a lot more holes than normal and different size hole counts on the injector. So it's really whizzy technology going on there. I was making more power than ever. They're burning cleaner than ever. Like, oh, my stack was really clean. My engine, my EGTs were getting a little bit friggin' hot though. So I've got to figure out what's going on. I'm still running stock push rods. I might have an issue with, we'll see. I'm going to take valve covers off and see. It got a little, it got a little hot on me. I was pushing it harder than I ever had, 64 pounds of boost. I basically drilled out the biggest nitrous jet. We were just letting this thing eat on the last miles of mayhem. And I got a little bit of oil coming out of its weird cylinder number three. I got a little bit of kind of oil happening on that exhaust port and it's chewing a little bit of oil. I got a little bit of blow by more than I had before. Like I, I had a couple rounds where I kind of hot lapped and I shouldn't have, I should have let it cool down just because I was pushing it so hard and it was crazy warm out. So I don't know, we might have, I still, man, this thing, I ain't tearing this apart. This thing's going to go forever. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but yeah, blow by is still super minimal. Like I just have a tiny bit more than I had before and it was eating a little bit of oil. So who knows, maybe I got it hot enough where it butted the rings because this is all stock long block. You know, it's factory crank rods, pistons, the cylinder head's never been off. That's the factory head gasket. I'm now running exotic head studs. Thank them for those. They they help, help me out with those. But before, prior to that, I was just running the stock head bolts. And what else do we got? Uh, yeah, engine wise. This is part of why I want to step up to the bigger air too. Like I got to cool it down. From the calculations, man, I'm making like 830, 840, 850 horse on this thing now. Non-intercooled, like my intake air temps will get up to about 240, 280, like which is toasty. But they have for the past four years, that's kind of nothing new. My EGTs were a little hotter than previously, and that's kind of new. 
But uh, again, I, I'm gonna check my push rods, make sure there's nothing happening there. And they might be deflecting. I might not be getting the valves opening. Man, they could even be tweaked a little bit. I don't know. Like it's still running smooth. Everything's everything's going good, but just got to step it up a little bit. Give it some more air. Cool it off a bit. Like running a what did I run? Running a 622 at 115 miles an hour. That's nine second territory all day long. That's nine second quarter mile stuff, man. That's 960s, 970s, 980s. Like so, this is. I'm totally happy with this kind of pile of junk has accomplished so far. Like nine second car is no joke. And the thing gets like 30 plus miles per gallon on the highway. So I got nothing to complain about. Super happy with how all this stuff has worked together and got me to where it is. Uh, I, man, it'd be hilarious to even keep the HX40. Uh, maybe I would run an intercooler, add another nitrous solenoid like just keep on going gate the 40 where it's happy let's say drop it down to almost 50 psi even because i've taken it to 64 now and it still isn't blown back it up to 50 psi gate it there and then add another nitrous solenoid and just keep fogging it to get up over a thousand horsepower but we'll see I, I think i'm just gonna step up to the this other turbo that's the fun of it just kind of seeing how far I can keep on going. The stock fuel system, it's hilarious. It's still hanging in there above 800 horsepower. I can't wait to see like how far I can take that. The next step might be upsizing the lines because these are super tiny. I can't remember when I measured the ID of the steel tubing, like, man, it's tiny, really tiny. It's smaller than a quarter inch. I'm sure it was, or, or it's 250 thou or 270 thou. Maybe it's 270, just a hair over quarter inch but like ridiculously small uh, fuel lines. That lift pump is really, it's doing its job. Well, I might end it here because this is about a half hour long video, but that's the update. Should be able, I don't know, still, I think there's still a lot left. Guarantee there's a lot left in a, a stock 12 valve, basically. Just get some more air on it, cool it down, a little bit more nitrous. I'm really uh, confident that transmission and all the power-driven diesel parts, and I built that myself, but with a lot of help from those guys. Pretty confident that's going to be, like, it's a crazy lightweight car. You know, we're, uh, I guess, the car isn't crazy lightweight, but in the diesel world, what people have accomplished with seven and 8,000 pound trucks, a 3,500 pound car is like, uh, is nothing. So right from the start, I figured this thing would be able to get into the eights, fairly budget orientated. Like I'm still stock camshaft. <laughs> Man, the camshaft in a 12 valve Cummins. I can't even remember what the lift is. It's so lame. It's, it's unbelievably tame. Like I think it might even be in like the three seventies. The actual valve lift is in like the 370s. I don't even think it's in the 400s. It's hilarious. And the duration isn't even that long. But just whack it with a pile of boost. Feed it lots of air, lots of fuel, and it's hilarious what these things will do. Okay, again, I said I would end it there, and I'll try to end it now. Bye.